Are we all ready? I think we are. Yes. I hope you're all ready. You're me. Yeah. Just go to the beginning. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speech. God be in my heart and in my feet. God be at my end and at my heart. Amen. Bless the pray. O God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, has laid in the Bless, we pray, this prayer as the place where the body of Mora, your servant, may rest in peace through your Son, who is the resurrection and the life, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Let us commend Mora to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. God, our Creator and Redeemer, by your power Christ conquered death and entered into glory. Confident of his victory and claiming his promises, we entrust Mora to your mercy in the name of Jesus our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great goodness. As a father is tender towards his children, so is the Lord tender to those who fear, for he knows that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like a flower of a field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone and its place will know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever and ever towards those that fear him and his righteousness upon their children's children. We have entrusted our sister Mora to God's mercy and we now commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies that they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen.
with this water, we call to mind more as baptism. As Christ went through the deep waters of death for us, so may he bring us to the fullness of resurrection life with Mora and all the redeemed. So our service continues. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. God is our representative strength, a very present soul. In trouble. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We gather here together today to remember before God the long life of Mora Idol, Ida Myrtle Christ. To share our memories of her as a quiet and faithful woman who cared deeply for the greater good of God's world. We give thanks for her life, for her hard work and for her deep faith. We are here to celebrate all that she meant to those around her, those whose lives she touched to commend her to God, our merciful Redeemer, to mourn her passing and to comfort one another in our grief and to assure ourselves that she is now safe in the love and life of God. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her, and may she rest in peace and rise in glory. Almighty Judge, God, you judge us with infinite mercy and justice, and love everything you have made. In your mercy, turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life, and the sorrow of parting into the joy of heaven. Through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, Charon is going to give tribute to dear friends more. There's not a great deal I can say, but I'm, I'm sure if anybody else wants to add anything, we feel free. I don't think you'll mind. No, not at all. Not at all. Only just to say, you know, I was very grateful when she came to um, live in Croydon and Evelyn and her husband were um, instrumental in introducing me to Tamara um, and how we remain friends, uh, you know, probably 25 to 30 years, quite a long time anyway. And um, she was an ideal person to share my, my flat at the beginning and then, as you know, she moved to Shaftesbury House and most of the time was very happy there. So, And in her last days she was able to be cared for, which is what she wanted. And But she had so wanted to go and be with the Lord. That's all she wanted is, you know, having lost her family, so um, I'm very grateful to her for her support at the beginning and, um, and I was able to help her at the end. So if anybody else would like to add anything. I just wanted to call happy memories when every month Moira and Sharon would come over for a meal and she would say when she heard the dial ride coming, oh I don't want to go back. <laughs> so that was lovely. She stayed with us and with our family till she went to Sharon and even I recall just a few months when I did ring her and she just said oh I'm she did may not have known who I was but she just said I just want to be with the Lord and that's lovely that's the memory I have that she loves the Lord Jesus Christ and she's gone to be with him in glory Amen. Uh. My name's Stephen from Woodside Green Christian Centre. Um, I was church for many years and Denmark Road Gospel Group before that. After she was called home, I sent an email out to a long-time friend of hers, Colleen Reddit, uh, in Chennai, who uh, 
uh, is the head of an incredible ministry in that city, many ministries in fact. And I find very timely I got her reply today. She says, Dear Stephen and friends in fellowship at Woodside Green Christian Centre, warmest greetings to you all in his precious name. It was a great shock and grief to me to hear about the passing of Moira Pry to be with the Lord. I hadn't heard from her for some time and knew she wasn't well for a long time and also had dementia. I missed her letters and often she would send me a gift. So I feel sad as she was a good friend to me. She is now at peace. I send my deepest sympathy to you all and also to Sharon Wallace. She has always been a very good friend to her. Moira came to know the Lord when she was with me in Chennai in the early days and then she helped me with the girls rally work. When she left for London we missed her a lot here and in the rally work. May God bless you all abundantly and thank you all that uh, you have been doing for her. Many people remember her and some of the people in your assembly will know me. I send my greetings to you all and pray the assembly will go on being blessed. She continued with news about her work which I will send to her own church. I just want to echo those thoughts of someone who knew her many years ago in India and for Moira sometimes when someone passes we think of them in the last few days or last few years when they're not quite so capable because of age and infirmity and illness. But we think of Moira who you could say was a very loyal and faithful servant of God, certainly in our church. Virtually every time we would have a service or a meeting she would be there and even when she was unable to get there by herself she was very grateful for this and Andrew here and myself uh, for a while were collecting her from um, Heaver Farm Centre to bring her to the church and she appreciated that and she would say to me sometimes oh, I'm such a burden on you and I'd say sometimes Maura there are times when we have to receive more than we give you have given so much in your life your love and care for people your support for work at our church and in numerous other places with friends with, with Sharon and, and the others too and said sometimes it's time just to receive a bit of help from those who are a little bit more able than you but she was a, a, a lovely lady a dear servant of God one as Sharon said desperately in the last few years wanted to be with her Lord she would say I've got no family left and I'd point to the church and say look at all this family and there are plenty more elsewhere too uh, but she wanted to be with her Lord and that's where she is now so we uh, as a fellowship rejoice in that sense that she has a desire that we miss her we haven't seen her at all uh, because of the lockdown etc and uh, given and taking of this but it's just a wonderful thing to be able to celebrate a life a service for God of love for her saviour the Lord Jesus Christ whom she trusted in and knows that she is now with him in glory it's a wonderful thing praise God I'd just like to add to that that um, she um, I used to um, many years ago uh, my daughters were quite young, some of you may remember them, and uh, when she met them, they'd run up to her and uh, she'd give them a hug, and one of them in particular, she'd always say, my little princess, she would say, it's my little princess, and she really loved both of them. So, uh, it's a sad loss, uh, because they have known her for that many years, and uh, so, as we said, you know, part of the family, in a way, part of our family too. So, remember her very affectionately in that way. Thank you. When I do a funeral, we let them do funeral weekend. Sometimes oh, we bring to God at those times some, maybe a few regrets that we have perhaps missed out on doing something that we should have done or not said something that we wanted to, we forgot to say it, we shouldn't have done. And they weigh on our hearts a little bit at those times. But we bring them to God, we bring those times, we lay them at the foot of Jesus and we ask for his forgiveness so that at that time we can feel completely free uh, of of those burdens and free to celebrate the life of the person who we mourn and miss so so deeply. And so as we come to this time, we call to mind those little failures perhaps 
shortcomings, things that we have left undone or unsaid, also the things that we didn't mean to. And we ask God for his forgiveness and healing because, as Maura knew so well, God is gentle and full of compassion. So as we turn to those things over to God, I'm going to say a prayer for healing, which is from the United Theological College, Bangalore. Come, holy God, come, loving source of our life, come, healing light, come, healing light, source of our life, come, healing light. So God blesses us and heals us. We say the special prayer for funerals upon it. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that all who died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Psalm 23, and I understand that probably Andy, who is the chaplain at Croydon University Hospital, who came to see Maura as she was passing and read this psalm for her to her. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The passage from Scripture that Laura herself chose from Romans chapter 8, verses 35 to 39. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May I speak in the name of Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So in her very typical preparedness, her organisational skills, Maura had already chosen that scripture passage that she wanted to be read at her funeral. And the context is that Paul was writing to those early Christians in Rome who were undergoing themselves persecution, cruelty and hardship and slaughter. And Paul wanted to assure them most profoundly of God's love for them and that nothing, not the most awful events imaginable, would separate them from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Paul's assurances today sum up Maura's unshakable faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And to some extent, they should also sum up for us what God's love is for us in these times that we're going through.
through these terrible times. Now, following my meeting with Sharon, and we've often met many times before, but mm. my meeting to uh, talk about Maura's funeral, when we talked about the arrangements, we knew that it wasn't going to be quite the occasion that we would have wished because of the COVID restrictions. And of course, it's not great for us, any of us, to be standing outside with the threatening grey clouds rather than indoors in the chapel or in the church or in the, uh, in the meeting space, listening perhaps to all some wonderful hymns as well from perhaps some, uh, some passages from, from India and from the place that she loved so much. But that's not possible. And I think Maura would have said to, to us, it's not a perfect situation, but God is with you all, with us all here today. So get on with it. The passage from Romans is for all of us, for the hardships we must endure. God will never fail us. In our service here, I have tried to capture something of Maura's life in India. And it looks like your service sheets have got a bit soggy, so I will promise that uh, um, Sharon have some more, so that you've got so, a nice dry coffee, uh, and uh, we'll get them round to you all. Can I just say that Sue did actually know Maura, um, because she does visit Hebrews, so for anyone that was, you know, I think that's why I actually asked Sue, because she had met Maura, and it was so much nicer for someone you know, this actually knows her, yeah. or met her. And I'm, I'm really quite disappointed that no one from there is yes. here. Yeah. So, um, there we are. So we live with that. Right? And so, as I say, I've tried to capture something of, of Maura's life, which she spent well over, well over half of her 90 years in the service of the people of India. And of course that continued in her support of Dr. Tommy Reddick uh, and the Christian charity, um, which um, and when, I, when I googled it, um, this wonderful work, absolutely fantastic work in enabling men, women and children to flourish and achieve their full potential, um, which of course is what our Lord wants, what Jesus wants, everything um, that we do in our lives as followers of Christ. So on the front of your um, service book, it, is the, uh, an image of the Marco Cross um, in memory of St Thomas. St Thomas, the first disciple to declare the risen Lord as his God and Saviour. And he was reputed to have travelled to India and the Marco Church of course was dedicated to St Thomas. Um, and so I thought that might be a suitable symbol to recognise her service in India. Um, and our love of the wisdom of And so I concluded the prayer we just had, the prayer of healing, and the prayer from India, which I will uh, say later, which is so beautiful. And I do have some experience of the Christian community in India from my earlier missionary days, um, and working with um, many wonderful Indian people from India who were Christian. And then there is the clerk in Laura's home. Uh, I will never leave the orphan sacred. These words capture her deep faith, her love of Jesus, in which she was rooted, grounded, and which infused all of her existence. And I'm sure that many times Maura would have rested on these words and pondered the wonder and glory of God's abiding love and purpose for all of us, all creation. We're in the season of Advent, the time of watching, waiting and hope. Maura's life was dedicated to the rekindling of hope, whether in her work at the High Commission, her role in transport, her continuing support of the Christian missions. She kept before her the good news of the Gospel and the vision of God's work. Maura was ready to meet her maker and because of the hope that we share today we know that she will live on in a new resurrection life perfect complete 
and free of the restrictions of her last years of her life. So today we give Maura back to God, to dwell in the heavenly places which God has prepared for her, reunited with her family and all those whom she loved. She will live on in our memories, a lasting tribute to her as she continues to inspire us to follow the example that she set in her faith and her work and her knowledge of her need of God. We are blessed to have been given the gift of her life. So let St Paul have the final word. <clears throat> May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We give thanks for more life. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give thanks for Mora, for the grace and mercy she received from you, and for all that was good in her life. For the memories we share and treasure today, especially we thank you for Mora's devotion to the people of India, with her support for the Christian mission Charitable Trust. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You promised eternal life to those who believe. Remember for good your servant Mora, as we also remember her. Bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom, where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Look in mercy on Maura's family and friends as we come before you to seek your comfort. Ask that you will provide strength over the coming days and weeks. Especially we pray for Maura, for a sister in law, Gordon and Evelyn, Colleen and Sharon, and all those who knew her and loved her. Lord, give them patient faith in times of darkness. Strengthen them with the knowledge of your love. Lord, you are tender towards your children, and your mercy is over all your works. Heal the memories of hurts and failure, and give us the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth. To follow Christ, to follow in his steps, in the way that leads to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, entrusting into your hands all that you have made, and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. So we pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us, the prayer, the family prayer of the Church throughout the world. Our Father, who art in heaven, oh, I'm sorry, thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The lovely Nunc Dimittis, prayer of the song of Simeon, as he met the child Jesus, six weeks, six, sorry, six week old baby Jesus, in the temple and recognized him as the savior of the world, the Messiah. Now, Lord, let your Servant, go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen.
right, right in the sense I did promise this lovely prayer, this night time prayer for the Church of South India. God our Father, by whose mercy the world turns safely into darkness and returns again to light, we place in your hands our unfinished hearts, our unsolved problems, our unfulfilled hopes, knowing that only what you bless will prosper. To your love and protection, we commit each other and all those who we love, knowing that you alone are our sure defender through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rest, O Christ, to your servant Mora with the saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Support us, O Lord, all the day long of this troublous life, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes. The busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe, safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we receive God's blessing on each of us here today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you, all whom you love, pray for and care for this day and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm not pouring down too much on this. <laughs> Sharon. Sharon. Sharon, dear.